Ms. Hooker, you are here with your mother because you say the defendant's son, Mr. Abraham, fathered your 10-month-old daughter, Kanaya. You say that Ms. Baker and her family's public denial of this child has caused you pain and you are here for an apology and to prove her son is the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Baker, you and your daughter are here today to represent your son, Mr. Abraham, because tragically, he was killed three months after the birth of this child. You say that before his death, your son expressed great doubt that he was the father of Miss Hooker's baby, and you are here to put the lies to rest. Is that yeah. correct? Yes, Your Honor. How have you been affected by Miss Baker's doubts about Kanaya's paternity? I'm just sad sometimes. I try to deal with it now. Like, I really don't care no more. Like, that's how I feel. I don't care anymore. I don't care who feel nothing about my baby. I don't care. It just seemed like everybody else looking upside my head like I'm an animal or something. Like, every time I'm well, sitting down doing something, they looking at me like I'm just... I, I'm the outcast of the group. She looked like me. So why is it a problem? That's why I just say I don't care about nothing. And none of that. I don't but care about okay. the way so, that you got about Ms. Hooker, let me ask you, what was your relationship with Keyshawn? Were you boyfriend and girlfriend? First, first, we was best friends. Sixth grade year, we was best friends. And then we, we started talking. Then we stopped talking and just like... Like, we stopped talking. Then we started going together for a minute. And then, like... We just, when I got pregnant, it was just like, we, all, we always talk, but we just stopped going together. But we still talking though, but we just stopped going together. Like, we want boyfriend and girlfriend. Okay. But then you still talked. Yeah. Were you in love or was yeah. this, this was your first love? Yeah. Okay. Can I jump in? Please. It's not that she don't care. Her feelings been hurt, so she hold a guard up. It's not Miss Baker who denies Kenaya. It's her family who makes my daughter feel some type of way. It's not Miss Baker. She was too fat to be his baby. She fat like them, and it, it's just a whole bunch of stuff. Never from Miss Baker. It's always her family who always have something to say about my grandbaby. My daughter' feelings have been hurt. It's always talk about her like she this tramp, and I'm like enough. So, Miss Baker, explain to the court why there's doubt that Keyshawn is Kanaya's biological father. My son was on vacation, and we, we kept hearing that Denia was pregnant, but then when we finally found out for sure, he told me, he said he wasn't the only boy that had messed with Denia. Okay. And he made me promise that we was gonna get a blood test, and things didn't go the way we thought they were gonna go, and now we're here. Well, I'm so very sorry for your loss. Let me say that. I know this is difficult. May I ask what happened to Keyshawn? He was shot mm. on a Sunday and he died that Friday. I'm so very sorry. He just told me to promise him that we was going to get a test done because of what the other young man said, and you know. What did the other young man say? He told Keyshawn that when he wasn't around, he was supposedly sleeping with the night. Miss Hooker, I have to ask you: Was there another guy? No, because that's why it's funny. Because how can somebody tell me who I was sleeping with? Nobody in the room was, was in the room with me when I was sleeping with somebody. What do I have to lie for? Keyshawn told us that he wanted the blood test. The only way... Keyshawn only denied the baby when her and... when him and my daughter was arguing. Other than that, I have pictures with him laying on her stomach. He had doubts only when he was angry. And I cannot get mad at what he tell his mother or nothing like that. But when he came over there with us, he held the baby, kissed the baby, and loved the baby. We just need to get the results for Miss Carolyn. Because anybody else, to me, it doesn't matter. It's all about her. And he did ask her to get the blood test. For it won't be no doubts on their end about my grandbaby, because it's, it's sad now. It, I agree. And it's not even Miss Baker. It's her family who makes it, like, she just sleeping around with everybody. And they don't know me well, like who, that, for them to be saying anything about me. said something. From what I ever heard about my family, nobody ever talked about it her. It all occurred so at her house. 
Then when I, I know my mom said something about, she had a birthday dinner and my mom did tell me, she said something about, she think I didn't like her or, you know, things like that. Maybe her perception of what other people view of her is just her perception because she, she has to understand that sometimes it's hard for people to look, for me personally to look at the baby because it's just a reminder that my brother's not here. So it's not about her and her feelings. When she does come around, it is a sense of sadness for me. So it's not that, you know, somebody looking at her crazy. They're just dealing with the murder of their loved one. So it's not, you know, about her. How did you learn that Miss Hooker was pregnant? Did She did... ride the same bus as my daughter and my granddaughter does from school. And they had came home, like, prior months before they had said, she was supposed to be pregnant. And I asked her, I said, do you know anything of your daughter being pregnant? I say, because the girls say they were on a bus and she's saying she's She's gonna like, find out what she's having tomorrow. What she's having and what she's gonna name the baby. And she was like, no. So when she got home, she ended up texting me a picture, to, you know, telling me, yeah, she is pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so we went the next day and found out what she was having. Yeah. So your mind Keyshawn accepted that he was the father of this child. Yeah, in my mind. In from my the mind. way he behaved at your home. Mm -hmm. But, Mom, Ms. Baker, did he have... Did he give you any proof or anything that there was this other guy? Because Ms. Uh, Hooker testified that this was the only person she was sleeping with at that time. I think he just went off what they're saying in their circle of kids. You know, they talk, they have their own... Yeah, that you know, he, the, the boy that was not, telling him that, that, you know, when you were away, I was messing with her. He was unsure to the point of where he was just sick, he was worried, lost... Scared. Uh, he was scared, he lost so much weight. He lost a whole lot of weight. Mm -hmm. uh. Like I told him, you played grown, now uh. it's time to be grown. Because if it's your baby, you not finna run and you not finna leave the whole bag on her. Him or my family are not those kind of people to do that. <laughs> mm -mm. What did I do to her? Oh, you I can't... Don't go, don't go, don't don't go there, Miss Lance. Don't, don't, don't go there, Miss Lance. Why don't, no, don't go there. Because you know the truth is you We're all here to talk, honey. This I don't is... Here. No, what well, I'm saying... Is, you keep commenting on stuff. What I'm saying... So why you keep talking? Listen, this is what we ain't gonna do because we can't come here to go back and forth with each other. You know what? And I ain't never... Um, judge, I ain't never, I ain't never said yay or nay. All I say is what my baby said to me. Right. I've talked to her, mm -hmm. and she know why we here. Exactly, and and listen. Yeah, I'm the one who and wrote the And that's all I'm concerned with. All this other bickering, and yes. I don't got time for it. Because yeah. yeah. at the end of the day, this, this my baby, right? And he gone, right? He not coming back. So all this <laughs> other extra stuff, I don't got time for it. And that's exactly <clears throat> why it's I so important. Know, I'm here to do what I promised my son to do. I'm not trying to do anything against anybody to make her feel bad. I ain't never been denying them. And we never had a problem. She come stay the night when she feel like it, her and the baby, everything. They was just with me on my, at my birthday dinner. I ain't never did nothing. Even make though my no son telling me that he wasn't sure I have never made, made did or said no anything to make her feel no bad kind of way. Cause like I said, they was kids. She's still a kid. Yeah. Yes. And I didn't come here for no badgering, no bickering, trying to put nobody down. Right. I came here cause this is what I promised my baby and it's gonna be done. And the truth is, Ms. Baker, and, and you're right. Right now. You're right. Judge, my daughter really feels some type of way. Of, it's not that she feels some type of way. It's like she more hurt behind the obituary. And Miss Carolyn has explained to her about the obituary, how the obituary went, but in her heart, she feel like Miss Bland left her out of the obituary on purpose. So... And that's why she has so much animosity toy, towards Toy. I just feel like this. When this come back and this is the baby, I don't want her... I don't want no sorries from nobody. Keep your sorries. I don't want no sorry. I'm not giving you a sorry. Okay? I'm not asking you to. Shut up. Hold on. I don't care. Hold on. Hold she on. She thinks she can say something to me because I'm a child. I'm gonna keep talking to her because she thinks she hard and she, I will punch her in her face. I don't care. Oh no 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 no! I've been waiting for her already. No. Uh, I don't care. No. I don't care. No. I don't care. Listen, so. listen, 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 Miss Hooker, you're gonna have your day, and it it, it and it's today. Okay. But but what we're not gonna do? I'm not gonna let you in this courtroom mm -hmm. step so far outside 
look, outside the lines, that you regret it. Because at this moment, you don't just represent yourself. When you, you become a mom, baby. you represent your baby. One of my family members is in the bitch with my baby. One, y'all can keep my family member out the bitch with. Okay, first of all, case. slow down, cause I want to understand. Why you telling? She said one of her family members was in an obituary. But there was no mention of Kanaya. Mm -hmm. Was this intentional, Ms. Baker, Ms. Bland? Uh, was this something that... I'm fight this judge. <clears throat> she went and finished up without me. So, Kanaya did get left out. So did my grandmother, and so did one of my sisters. Okay. It wasn't just the baby. Okay. And we weren't together. Nobody was thinking right at that time. We weren't, were none of us together. She went ahead to try to call herself helping me and she was going ahead of me to finish it up and all three of these people got left out. So it wasn't just Kanaya. Ms. Bland, did you, and I want to ask you this, did you intentionally leave Kanaya out of that obituary because you knew there was a question surrounding the paternity? Yes, I did. First of all, let me say this. My mama has a relationship with them. I don't. It may or may not be his. I did not put the baby name in there just in case it isn't. That my mom has to read that obituary. She lost a child. Nobody else lost one. So, if this baby turned out to be his, that's a, that's a death all over again. Do I want my mama to look in there and look at a reminder of a baby that was supposed to be his and it wasn't? No, I do not. I'm thinking about my mama feelings. My, it's a, it don't, has nothing to do with her. And so, Nothing. so let, so now let's 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 come forward. If it is Kishan's child, mm -hmm. well, your family, your mother has expressed she has not had an ill will towards this baby or Miss Hooker. But will your family accept Kenaya? Yes, yeah. they will. I haven't. I, they don't have. To. I already talked. You know what I said. I already judged. Since she got left out the obituary, I have already told them, if it comes back saying Kenaya belongs to Keyshawn, I'm going directly back to the funeral home and get a set of obituaries made so when this baby grow up and she read her dad's obituary, there's her name. That is... That is honorable. And my mama did mention it. And I said, Ma, I thought the baby may not be his. That's what I said. Because that's what she said. I, that's what he said. Yeah, that's what he said. But I, me, myself, if I'd have been there to finish up, I was putting her in there because my feelings was I'd rather her been in there if she was than for her to grow up and, hey, I'm reading my dad the obituary, but where my name at? Exactly. I didn't want that. I think it's time for the results. Thank you. Jerome. There you go. Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Because there wasn't a blood card available to test the DNA of the deceased Keyshawn Abraham, we performed what is called a DNA test with his surviving parents, Carolyn Baker, and Lamond Abraham. With that being said, the results determined if there is a viable relationship between the child, Kenaya Abraham, and Ms. Baker, and Mr. Abraham. In the case of Coates Hooker versus Baker, when it comes to 11-month-old Kenaya Abraham. It has been determined by this court. The percentage of relatedness between Ms. Baker, Mr. Abraham, and Kenaya Abraham is... zero percent. This, this is why right here. Miss Baker, are you all right? Do you need no. to sit down? Do you need it's to sit not. down, ma'am? 
they, they weren't gonna tell me sorry, so I'm not telling them nothing. Do you need to sit down, Nobody man? Nobody did anything to you, honey. I don't care. Nobody Miss did anything to me, but I don't like you. you. That's I don't like you. Oh, it's I don't like you. Okay, I don't care. It's okay. Stop talking to me then. Nobody did anything stop to you. Miss Hooker, no, just stop. Stop it. Stop it. Stop, please. Just stop. Okay, come on, let's go. So you do owe my let's mom go. an apology, though. That's some you old one. No, excuse me. Because you know you slept with somebody else. Miss Hooker. Miss Hooker. 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 No, 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 no. Hey, go in there. No. Go in there. No. Go in there. Go in there. No. Go in there. No. No. You do too much. No. I don't care because you always think you can Ms. Nelson, you say you grew up believing one man was your father, yet had another man listed on your birth certificate. Yes, Your Honor. Then, after you turned 30 years old, a third man, the defendant, suddenly contacted you on Facebook claiming he was your father. Yes, Your Honor. Today, you say you hope DNA test results will finally reveal the truth. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sterling. Yes, ma'am. You're here with your daughter and say it was she who helped you find Miss Nelson. Yes, ma'am. You claim today you will reveal why another man's name is on Miss Nelson's birth certificate and prove to her you are indeed her father. Yes, ma'am. So, Miss Nelson, please tell the court, how did you first hear about Mr. Sterling's claims? Um, well, Your Honor, I grew up um, my whole life knowing a different man was my, was my dad. It was a man that was in prison. Um, my mother took me to visit him weekend after weekend, week after week, and this is the man I grew up knowing that he was my father. Um, I had went to New York to visit this man for two weeks, and he told me that this other man was on my birth certificate because my mom didn't want somebody like him in my life because he was in and out of prison. And so the explanation given was she just wanted to protect you. Yes. So she put another man's name on the birth certificate because I was in and out of prison. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a copy of your birth certificate with you? Yes, ma'am, I do. Ron, let me see that, please. Father's name listed, Vincent Preston Nelson. And that's not the name of the gentleman you visited in prison? No, Your Honor. So, this had to be confusing. Yes, Your Honor. I was hurt because I never knew who he was. I just knew that this man was my dad and I felt like my mom should have told me that this man was my father even though he was in and out of prison. I just... I was hurt. So, then you get a message from a man, another man. Yes, Your Honor saying he's your father. Yes, sure. Explain. I got a message from a man named Christopher Lancaster um, saying that I'm your dad. He was sorry for not being in my life and he now wants to be in my life. And he left two numbers on there. I contacted both those numbers. Both the numbers were disconnected because it was four months prior that he had left me the message. It was in my other's box on Facebook. That's how he messaged me on Facebook. He left the two numbers. I called the two numbers. Neither one of the numbers worked. May I see that evidence, please? Jerome, please yes, hand. Sure. Yes. Thank you. Well, I know you don't know who I am, but I'm your father. I'm so sorry for all of the years I have missed you growing up. What were you thinking when you get this message? <laughs> Your Honor, honestly, I didn't even know what to think because it was like... I was... It's like it's just coming out of yeah, nowhere. Absolutely. It was it was outrageous to me that I had got this message with all these different men. Did anything lead you to believe other than what you had been told? My mom always told me that the man on my birth certificate, Vincent Nelson, was my father. This is what my mom told me. But this other man that was in prison told me that that wasn't true. He was my father. And now Yet another message. It's coming through from Christopher Lancaster saying this man was my father. So this I... This is incredible. Yeah. So, Mr. Sterling, she gets a message from a Christopher Lancaster. Yet you're here in court. Yes, ma'am. Your name is Christopher Sterling. Yes, ma'am. How did she get this message from a Christopher Lancaster? Do Lancaster... you know that person? Yes, ma'am. I put that message on uh, Facebook. The reason being, I had problems with other people in my life, so I didn't want to use my real full name. So I made up a, I made up a Facebook page 
of Christopher Lancaster. I always was looking for my daughter. Always. I, to me, I feel that she's my daughter. So I always was looking for her. I remember her birthdays and everything. So I always was looking for her. So I put that message on there to contact her for nobody else to contact me. So you were the person behind the Christopher Lancaster note? Yes, ma'am. So you had a relationship with her mother? Yes, ma'am. Knew of her? Yes, ma'am. You were in a relationship, a sexual relationship or a committed relationship with her mother? Uh, we was young, Your Honor. We was young. We met in high school. Okay. 17, 18 years old. We was young. You know, you're young, you fall in love with each other. So we had the relationship, had sex. When you found out she was pregnant, did you know you were the father? Yes, ma'am. I was there at the hospital. I went, uh, when, when her mother water broke, my mother took her to the hospital. And so what happened? You're, you're, you're there, but you lose contact with this woman that you say is your daughter. Okay, what happened was, far as like a religion thing, and I didn't want to commit towards the religion thing because I was, I was running the streets, DJing, playing music, and I didn't want to commit to the religion thing. So I feel a family took her away from me and moved her somewhere else, and I never heard from them again. So, Ms. Nelson. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Your entire life, you hadn't heard of Christopher Sterling or Christopher Lancaster. No, Your Honor. The only person I knew of was Vincent Nelson and the man who said he was my dad. Those were the only two people I knew of my entire life. And Mr. Sterling, you're saying that this was a pretty deep relationship you had with her mother. I mean, you all were... Yes, ma'am. ...high school sweethearts and... Yes, ma'am. High school. You were sweetheart. there for the birth. We met in high school. We had sex every day during the oh. summer. Every day. Every day. Oh my God. Every day. Oh my God. My mother even caught her in the house. My mother walked in the door and I heard the key come in, but I had her mother hiding in the closet. So my mother didn't pay no attention. My mother walked by and then I forgot and left her clothes there, her shoes in the oh, living room. My God. And my mother seen it and said, who you have in this house? Oh. I said, nobody. And she opened up the closet door. That's what you call busted. Pulled out. <laughs> yes, y'all. <laughs> but butterball naked. Oh, well, maybe you didn't need to hear that story, no, Ms. Nelson. I didn't, y no, I didn't, Your Honor. But anyway, but, uh, Your Honor, and do, do the whole situation, I got on punishment for everything. And I'm the guy. I was on punishment for two weeks. When you should have been. When my parents <laughs> fought, they, uh, For the whole they summer put me, and beyond. Honor, they put me on punishment <laughs> for two weeks. You know what we had to do? We were so much in love. I used to tie a note, because we stayed on the fifth floor. It's the project, so we stayed on the fifth floor. I used to hand a note down on the string and then give it to her. She would tie her note up, and I pulled the note up. I was on punishment for oh two weeks. Oh, my God. That's how much we was in love. <laughs> All right, you're <laughs> redeemed. Thank you. <laughs> My question is, how can this be possible? Because there's the man in prison and there's Vincent Preston Nelson and then you say you were at the hospital. Because, ma'am, I am Vincent Preston Nelson. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> you are... You are... Vincent Preston Nelson. Yes, ma'am, and I have evidence to prove to you right now today. Let me see that evidence. That is, in fact, you. I was younger then. Excuse my hair. I didn't get a haircut back then. This is you on this yes, ID card. Well, when I grew up, I never met my real father. When I met my father when I was 17, he said, we changing your name to Christopher Sterling Jr. I said, of course. You took your father's name. Yes, ma'am. So you are in fact the man listed on her birth certificate as her father. Yes, ma'am. So Ms. Nelson, you've established a relationship with this other man. Yes, Your Honor. That's who you were led to believe is your father your whole life. Yes, Your Honor. Do you look like the other man? 
Yes, I do. I do. I look like the Mr. other man. Mr. Sterling, I see this has you very emotional. What is it you feel? Are you just so upset because she was led to believe something different? I look like him. I don't, I don't look like this man right here. And you just believe in your heart that's your daughter? Yes, your honor. And all these years, you've been hurting, just <laughs> missing her? Yes, your honor. It's almost yes. unbelievable. Yeah, it is, your honor. And this is my first time ever meeting him. I've never met this man in my life. Well, oh. I've never met him in my life, and this is my first time meeting him and seeing him and... <laughs> If he is my dad, this is unbelievable. This is, this is great if he is my father. If he's not, then. But I've been so many years, man. So, Christopher Lancaster, who is Christopher Sterling, who was Vincent Preston Nelson. Yes, man. May be your father. Oh, wow. Yes, Your Honor. Jerome, I think we need to talk to her mother. Please escort her in. Oh, no. <laughs> huh? Hi, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Hello, Your Honor. Thank you for joining us today. Miss Haynes, you are Miss Nelson's mother. Yes. You admit you had a relationship with this gentleman, Christopher Sterling. Yes. But do you know him as Christopher Sterling? I know him because I know as Christopher Sterling because I was there when he met his father. He's saying he was there at the hospital Correct. when she was born. Correct. There was a disconnection. It was a disconnection, yes. And then he was no longer a part of your life, right. nor his daughter's. Yes. And at some point, you met this man in prison, and then you ended up telling your daughter that he was her father. Never. Against my wishes and against her fam my other family's wishes, who she was staying with, she snuck and went to see this man. So you never told I her never, that. He, but Ms. Nelson, you felt that. like you were led to believe it because he, he said, I'm your father. I'm your father and your mother took me out of your life and said, I, can, I cannot be a part of your life because I'm in and out of jail. My family did not want me to have a relationship with him, but I chose to have a relationship with him because this man was telling me he was my father. And this is the man I knew. And this is the man that I called daddy. I didn't know this man right here, Christopher Sterling, Vincent Nelson, whatever his name is. I didn't have a relationship <laughs> with this man. I didn't know him. Mr. Sterling, where were you, though? We lost contact, Your Honor. She was two, three years old the last time I seen her. We was in Coney Island at Nathan's. I bought her french fries. Yeah. That's the last time I seen my daughter. Yes, I remember her birthday, July 25th. Every yes. year. That's my daughter right here. She 23 years old. When she was born, I told her she had an older sister. Am I lying? Ma'am, please stand up. Let me hear your testimony. And your name is, ma'am? Amber and Sterling. And you're Mr. Sterling's daughter? Yes. And so you remember your entire life being told you have an older sister. Yes. Do you believe Miss Nelson is your sister? I want to believe it. There's a slight doubt, but I don't know. I have no idea. I would like to know. I would like her to be my sister. Aww. I never talked to her. I never seen her. I don't know what she looked. This is my first time ever seeing her. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sharna. And you say you have some doubt. Why do you have doubt? I've been told my whole life, but I've never met her. And I feel like if that was my sister, why, why wasn't it a connection? Why didn't we have a connection? And it's more where I came from. I have two other siblings. So it's like, why wasn't she brought to me? Like, were us two brought together, period. So it's like, is she my sister? I don't know. I have no idea. This is a lot. I mean, this it is, is just... And I don't even know what to say. I don't even... I honestly don't even know what to say, but I feel like he could have done more to find me. I feel like he did not do enough. I'm 31, Your Honor. I've right. been through a lot, and I feel like if he really wanted to find me, he could have found me, and, and I feel saying, like he really right. didn't want to find me. No, and that's I how I feel. But Why I feel like you really you didn't, think? because that's Why? how I feel. I feel like you didn't ever want to really find me. If I'm busy, me. and I'm taking care of what you I have to take care of... You're too busy to find your daughter? You too busy? I'm 31 years old. Wow, really? Okay. I think it's time for the result. Oh, God. God. Thank you, Jerome. You absolutely may. Please, Mom. I got it. Betty. All right. 
what you've been waiting for. Huh? I know. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Nelson V. Sterling Haynes, as it pertains to whether Mr. Vincent Nelson, also known as Christopher Sterling, is the biological father of Miss Nelson. In the case of Nelson V. Sterling Haynes, as it pertains to whether Mr. Vincent Nelson, also known as Christopher Sterling, is the biological father of Miss Nelson. <laughs> it has been determined by this court, <laughs> Mr. Sterling, you are her father. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. <laughs> this is exactly why I get up in the morning. <laughs> I commend you, Miss Nelson, for having the courage to go through every path you had to walk down, everywhere the stories led you. Now you know who you are exactly. and to whom you belong. Exactly. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Thank you so Anna. much. Congratulations. Thank you court so is adjourned. Miss Moore, yeah. your son has brought you to court today, but you've asked to have some time alone with me before he enters the courtroom to present his case against you. You haven't seen your son since a lifelong secret became exposed just two months ago. The court has already issued a paternity test, and those results will be revealed today. Now, Ms. Moore, what was the secret that you kept for almost three decades? 29 years ago, I had my... I had an affair uh, between two guys, and I didn't tell my son. Okay. I'd like to bring your son in at this time. Oh, God. Jerome, if you could please escort... Mr. Weeks in, please. Mr. Weeks? Take the podium on the I'm also... This is not gonna work good. Good day, Mr. Weeks. How you doing? Thank you for being here today. If you could, please, tell this court how you became suspicious that the man that raised you may not be your well... biological father. It started around like I was nine years old. I heard, I kept hearing rumors from outside family members that Maurice might not be my father or I might not be his son. I asked, but I always get the same results. For a long time, I got the same result. Your Honor, he never asked me. I asked. Had my son I, I asked, asked me? I have asked your Honor told him. and told her. I, you know, I asked, I came to her and asked her. She always told me, Maurice is your father. And but That's what I did. I, I, I listened to my mom. She said, Maurice, it's your father. That's, that's in the subject. Now, okay. Ms. Moore, but you I said had... that he never asked you. He never asked me. And she... uh, quite honestly, if my son had asked me, I would have told him, but I would have also told him not to say anything because I didn't want my mother to know. So you were I... reluctant just because you didn't want your mother to reject him. My mother has rejected my daughter. Yes, I didn't want another child rejected. I grew up stern with those beliefs that uh, a child out of wedlock was not going to be accepted by her. How did you find out? How did your mother like, finally let you know? I came up here for her birthday, and I went to the corner store, you know, just give me some, you know, something to eat. I saw this, I see another family member of mine. He asked me how my father was, and t uh, I told him he's doing fine. You want to talk to him? He said, yes. Yeah. So I went in my pocket, caught, brought my phone out, called him right there on the spot. As soon as he got on the phone, he said, oh, my bad. I got the wrong number. So he gave me back the phone. So I stood back. You know, we had a little awkward moment, like... So basically, he was implying uh, Maurice somebody, wasn't your father. Right, implying that Maurice wasn't my father, somebody else was. I came through the door, talked, then it just, I just came after. 
the plain blank, I like, you couldn't, you can't lie to me no more. I can't, I can't hear that Maurice Weeks is your father. I, I had to know the truth. And she I came, have she no came problem to, with that she because came to I want to know. I she had... came to me and said, I don't know who is your father. I did. Just like that. I did. So, naturally, I got upset about it. Now, Ms. Moore, what would you like to add? Okay. When I approached Earl to find out what was going on with Earl, again, oh. Oh, Earl didn't say it. On that Earl note, didn't say anything to note, me Honor, about this re here until a couple of months ago. Hold up, Earl. On this, Hold on up, this. Earl. I'm still your mom. I let you talk. <laughs> a couple of months ago, okay, he broke out. He came into town. I didn't even know my son was coming into town. He came out with it. I told him. I didn't know. I don't know. Had he asked me at nine, if he had asked me at three, if he had said anything at 18 when he graduated, yes, I still would have told him, but I would have still said, don't tell your grandmother. I went to Maurice. I asked Maurice, don't you think it's my time we let Earl know that there's a possibility? Maurice like, no, leave it alone. I'm here now. I'm going to be here. He's so my son. So you were concerned about that, and when you consulted with your husband I, at the uh, time, he just said, leave it be. Right. Your so Honor. to make me the heavy on this here when I was living with two other children, plus Earl, with a man who accepted my children, who put a roof over their head. I wasn't going to jeopardize that to Your take Honor. that away from my son, who Earl know for a fact had a baby from six months old to five years old. Earl was on the road with this man. He bonded with this man. He loved this man. This man loved him. I wasn't going to change it when the man himself said, Jackie, I will be there for your children through everything. I wasn't going to change that. I wasn't going to jeopardize my other children just for one. And you, you sacrificed and you I kept sacrificed that secret. I heard it over this. I heard it for Earl. Yeah. Even yeah. though when Earl came to me and told me in the rage that he was in, I heard it from my child I never wanted my children to hurt. But at the time and the age I am now, I thought I was doing the right thing for my son and the rest of my children. I heard it just like Earl did, but he was in such a rage. I said, okay, I got to put a stop to this. Ms. Moore, you talked about maybe you know, dating two men. There may be another men. man involved, yes. And and how do you have this doubt? How firm is this doubt? Were you with these two men in a very a short, short time, time frame? In a very short time frame, like maybe 24 to 48 hours. Okay. And then it became more doubtful as Earl started growing, and I noticed the difference. So this has been a painful secret for you to mm -hmm. just hold in. Your, your whole life, you've known this. My whole life I had doubts, yes. Because I noticed things with Earl that wasn't a part of Maurice, uh, that didn't resemble Maurice. I lived it with him. But I am not the only one that didn't tell my son. And if I known that at the time that Maurice, that Earl would have been that much raised a few months ago, Lord in heaven knows, I would have told my son regardless. Only thing I didn't want to happen was my mother to find out. Whether my mother knew in her gut or not, it was not the way I was raised. And I couldn't test losing another child that my mother wouldn't love. I named her after my mother because I wanted her to love my children regardless if she thought I was a floozy loose in the street. These are my children and I would have loved Earl no matter what. And I would have did anything I could to protect him. And Maurice was there. He loved him. He took care of him. And he took care of me and he took care of my other two kids. For Earl to be in a rage right now, he needs to understand that I love him in the world. He was my special child. He really was, because a year before I had her, I was told I would never have any kids. So when Earl come here, and Lord knows, 10 pounds and 14 ounces and 23 inches long is a lot of baby to carry for anybody. So to tell me I didn't care enough to want to know the truth, that's my reason. I would have kept everything a secret as long as I could until 
my child would have come to me and asked me, Mom, please, fear, I need to um, know. Your fear of disappointing your mother, I mean, I feel it. It's, 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 it's so deep. It's so strong. You knew, you just, you knew if I told the truth, she would reject my she son. She was going to reject my son. She would have. Marie stayed there for the whole 20 years he was there in my life with my other kids and Earl. So Earl can't just, just be this just angry that he didn't know. I didn't know. I was only mm -hmm. caught in between two guys. Okay, so now let's say, you were 27 years old, you should have known better. Maybe, but sometimes you get caught up in a situation that you love one and you can't do without the other and you're gonna try to make it work. Don't. But. No, you feel like you deserve the truth. Well, I would have to wait Jerome, this long. Did you have Mr. Hand Mr. Weeks okay. with some Kleenex? Well, well, I would have to wait this long. Whether who would have came, excuse me. Whoever would have came to me about it, whether it's her or Maurice, why would y'all come to me? The reason why it's coming out now is that I can't live this life no more. It was happened to me. My mom was caught between two men. Okay. So this cycle, this same exact thing, happen to you. Yes, and I'm gonna stop it. But you, but you know. <laughs> I'm beyond, beyond pleased, and I commend you just for having the courage to not keep the lie going. Mr. Weeks, did you grow up loving Maurice? I grew up crazy about this man. <laughs> like, I had to be in his pocket just to get, to make sure he don't leave me. <laughs> That's true. It just hurt, Your Honor. It hurt that that I had to come to, as a child of both of them. I had to come to them. I know. About I gotta, it. And I, I can imagine that it's not just hurting you, but also your relationship. And for that, I would love to have you stand, ma'am, and state your name. Hey, doing? My name is Cynthia Walker. Hello, Miss Walker. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Now, you are in a relationship currently with Mr. Weeks, am I correct? Yes, ma'am, we are engaged. You're engaged, wonderful. Um, <laughs> can you tell the court how this has been since he's come to know this? Yes, ma'am. First of all, Your Honor, it has been frustrating for not only Earl and I, but it has also been frustrating for my two children. We have a son and daughter together. Ever since he been going through this thing with his mama, uh, mother months ago when he found out, he's been distant with her, he's been distant with me, he's been distant with our children. I mean, it's like a domino effect. I mean, what sh the lie that she's been holding for almost 30 years, I mean, true enough, I can understand where Miss Jackie is coming from. Uh, Things happen. You do make mistakes. But at the end of the day, you have to live with the consequences of the decisions that you make. Okay. First of all, wait a minute, Miss Jackie. Because I'm see, you Earl is not a child anymore. He's a grown man with a family. And I would never, ever hold anything from my children. That's what a mother does. Okay. I mean, you was wrong for that. Okay, and now I'm just being wrong because I can accept it from my son. But I don't owe you nothing. You, know, you owe me everything. Between them, please. Because if, if it's too late for me to love my fat, my son now, then it may be too late when yours get 30. Never. Bag up. Never. Bag up. Because at the end of the day, Never. I love him. You should have been a woman about your business. And when you go back in the year that I was living and raising my kids, you stepped to me in 2013 and tell me you weren't a woman. Or make me believe I wasn't a woman. Okay? I was a woman, a mother, and a hard-working truth. Let's have some order. Let's have some order. Take a breath. At the end of the day, I am 57 years old. And back then, I did what I thought I had to do to raise my kids, put a roof over their head, put shoes on their feet, and Let food in their stomach. And this man, Maurice, did that unconditionally. I won't take nothing from it, but I can understand 
My son and did. You know what? That could be understanding to Cynthia. You know what? This court... I'm so glad you all are here. I can't even tell you. This court is about moving forward and, and how to do that. I... I... <laughs> you know, Ms. Walker, you have so much love for Mr. Weeks. Your attack against Ms. Moore and your condemnation of her decisions is based upon your love and watching the way his hurt is not only affecting him, but your family, yes. your kids, yes. and that's natural. Yes. I didn't grow up in this era, but I remember the generation before me where if a young person got pregnant, they'd go off down south or somewhere for a year. I don't know if you, yes, any of you I remember know, that. Then they just disappear. Yeah. They come back, they're not pregnant no more, and the next thing you know, where's the baby? Who knows it'd be with another family member who would have gotten adopted? Everything was secret. She grew up in a time where a culture of secrecy was normalcy. So even though what she maybe did was wrong and you don't understand it and you are so angry with her because of the way Very it is angry. affecting Very. your your your, your, your fiancé, you do have to understand that it wasn't 2013 with Facebook and Twitter where everybody tells all their business right. as soon as it happens. <laughs> it just wasn't that. do today is figure out how do we go forward. From experience, I can say this. Where there is emotion, there is still love. You all love each other. I love my son with all my heart. You love your son like and you love Miss Walker. I love Cynthia because she is a good person for my son. She's good. She's a good mother. Maybe you needed to get that out and maybe this court was just the place where you need to lay it on the table. <laughs> With all of that said... Uh, can I hug my son? Of can course I hug you my may son? hug your son, and then we can have the results. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I love you. I love you, too. No matter what, I love you. I love you, too. And I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Jerome, if you could please hand me the envelope. There you go. As it relates to Mr. Earl Weeks, Mr. Weeks, the man who has raised you for the past 29 years is not your biological father. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what you did for your son. You gave him a father that loved and accepted him, and you gave him the best life you knew how to give him. You cannot beat yourself up over this. It was a judgment call. You had to make it, and you did. Come sit. She needs you. Come sit. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry.